I'm so excited that we are continuing in this series that we started last week called Freedom. We believe that God wants us to live lighter. And he, we also believe he wants us to learn how to li- leave our yesterdays in our yesterdays, right? God has made a way for each of us to live in freedom. And yet... In the middle of all that, there's still so many of us that are weighed down and we carry every day all of the burdens and the worries of our lives. But we believe that this series entitled Freedom has the power through Jesus to change each and every one of our lives, no matter where you're at in your spiritual journey. So I just want to take just a moment, and if you weren't here last week, I just want to do a little recap of what we talked about. Um, We started on the journey of freedom, and we took a look at the prodigal son. And the prodigal son was trying so hard to be free. I mean, he lived hard, right? He was partying. He went on a lot of spending sprees. But the reality was he was not free. He was in a deep bondage that was holding him and we learned last week just like that young man that we have a heavenly father who loves us even when we make unwise choices we have a heavenly father who loves us in the middle of our mess we have a heavenly father who loves us and is longing for us to come home to him and we have a heavenly father who loves us because he is a perfect father. And these are some foundational truths that we need to get into our hearts and our minds about who God is and really believe these things about our heavenly father. And that sets up the journey to freedom because when you have a God like that, I don't really have anything that I need to be afraid of. There's nothing to fear. I can actually have confidence and peace because God's love is guaranteed. There's nothing I have to do on my own to earn his love for me. It's not based on my efforts. I don't have to go and earn it. And with a father who loves me like that, we realize that I can be honest about the limitations that I know that I have, and I can draw upon God's strength. So this morning, would you open your hearts with me, and let's ask God to help us hear what he wants to say to us today. Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And we want that freedom that you have for us. God, we want that, and we desire it. Help us right now to lay down those things that weigh us down so that you can become everything in our lives and you can carry out your plans that you have for us. We open up our hearts to hear from you now. So will you speak loud and clear to your sons and daughters this morning? In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Come on, somebody. Freedom. Freedom. I'm ready for some freedom in my life. And that's what this series is all about. And uh, we've been digging out of Scripture the power that God has to transform our lives. We all want freedom, but come on, let's, let's, let's be honest. The truth is, we all don't live free, at least not all the time. Are y'all going to be quiet on me today? <laughs> Let me just start this one over with. Hey, good morning, everybody. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we, we want freedom, but we're not all free. I love this picture uh, that uh, I found on the internet. If you bring it up, yeah. Okay, so there's this horse, <laughs> and it's tied to this little plastic lawn chair. Don't you love it? Uh, if this horse wanted to, he could be free like that, right? He could just like uh, walk away, gallop away, smash that little plastic chair uh, to smithereens but he can't because he has been conditioned that when his reins are tied up in his head he's thinking 
Whenever my reins are tied up to something, I'm powerless. I can't move, and I'm not free. Even though what he's tied to is literally nothing compared to the strength that he has in his life. It's a little funny because this picture makes an important point, point for us. And it's that sometimes the things holding us back are not really out there. They're in here, right? They're not the things that we're tied to or the thing. They're the, the thing that's really holding us back is right up in here in our, our, our minds. We've got this God-given potential to be free. We've got this strength of the Holy Spirit that's been poured into our lives. But sometimes the obstacles that keep us from experiencing this true freedom isn't out there, but it's actually in here, in our hearts and our minds, because we get conditioned to a certain way of thinking, conditioned to a certain way of living, and we assume this is the way it is, this is the way it's always going to be, and I've got limits on my life. You are born to be free. And uh, you have this potential to live free. Some things uh, kind of get in the way sometimes, and they hold us back, and we can't move past them. <clears throat> what I want to do today is to zero in on a single verse that we read last week in the story of the prodigal son from Luke chapter 15. And then I, I want to take it and I want to amplify uh, that verse for you with some other biblical text. And so uh, if you remember last week, Michelle just did a little recap, but uh, we talked about this son and uh, he, he takes the family fortune and he squanders it and, and, and he's running as far and as fast as he can from dad thinking that he's going to find his freedom out there, uh, uh, not under the rules of the house, not under the, uh, the regiments of the father or the family. Uh, and, and he finds himself sitting in a pig pen. We talked about last week. I mean, that's pretty gross. Uh, I, I said, y'all are city folks right y'all never been in a pig pen uh, i grew up my friends had farms and i helped feed pigs before and it's gross y'all and you, you better not wear any good shoes out there because you ain't gonna have them after the first time you walk out there because uh, it's just gross and uh and and here's the thing uh it's not just gross because the pigs are pigs but can you think about this for a moment this was a young jewish man and he was kosher, right? He, he followed the Jewish tradition. So uh, pigs were considered unclean. You weren't supposed to be around them. You weren't supposed to touch them. You weren't, you know, and if you did, you were unclean, which prevented you from uh, participating in certain parts of worship. And so here he is. He finds himself in the pig pen, someplace he's not even supposed to be. And he's so hungry that he longs to eat what the pigs are eating. I've been hungry before, but I don't think I've ever been that hungry, right? I've ate some weird things. I've traveled around the world a few places. I've ate some strange stuff sometimes, but I never ate that, what the pigs are eating. And it's at that moment when he comes to this place, he stops the frenetic pace that he had been running running from home, running to have a party, running to spend his inheritance, running to enjoy life. And he finds himself in a spot where he slows down and he sits down and he's in a pig pen. And that's where he has this aha moment that we talked about last week in Luke chapter 15 and verse 17. If you got your Bible, you can read it with me. I'm reading from the NIV. And it says this, when he came to his senses when he came to his senses he said how many of my father's hired men have food to spare and here i am starving to death in other words the light bulb went on in his head and he had this moment of awareness he became aware of his surroundings. He, he, he became aware of where he had been and where he had landed in his life. And he became aware of the fact that he was so hungry. And yet, he's like, my, the servants at my father's house, they got plenty of food. And here I am starving to death. 
See, can I tell you this morning that you'll never experience God's freedom in your life until you come to one of those moments of brokenness. One of those moments of self-awareness uh, where you take a long look in the mirror like this young man and, and in Luke chapter 15, he becomes aware that, hey, my life is a mess. <coughs> I'm a mess. He sees for the very first time uh, this empty and hollow uh, shell of a man and he's like uh, realizing who he's actually becoming and it's not who he thought he was becoming he left home looking for freedom and and, and all of these things and yet he finds that man I'm, I, I didn't make it and I'm in a worse position than I've ever been in my life and I asked you this morning for your life do you like what you're becoming in that moment, he comes to his senses and he becomes aware. And I'll tell you today that that's that step one in learning how to live free. Awareness. All right? That's, I, that's the title of the message today. It's awareness. Sometimes we're just not even aware of what's going on in our life. We kind of, I, I think somebody uses the word sometimes aloof. We're not, we're not uh, aware of what's happening. We, we're not paying attention to it uh, I, I wonder how aware you are today sitting in this room are you aware of what's going on around you are you aware uh, are you aware of, of uh, how others are experiencing you as a person uh, are you aware in your relationships with the people in your life in your neighborhood in your family on your job are you aware I, before you answer these questions, I want to do a little test with you. And uh, it's called an awareness test. And uh, I'm going to show you a little video in just a moment. And uh, you can bring up the picture. I think there's a picture of two, two uh, basketball teams, right? One's dressed in predominantly white. The other's dressed in predominantly black. And uh, in this awareness video, and if anybody has seen this before, be quiet right now. Don't give it away. <laughs> I know, <laughs> Jordan's up here like this, right? He's covering his mouth, he's seen it. Uh, but, but if you've seen it, hold on just a minute. It's a short, quick video. One team blessing, dressed in white, one team dressed in black. And the team in white and the team in black are gonna pass the basketballs around. And I want you to see if you can count how many passes the team dressed in white is gonna make. You gotta really focus in if you're gonna be able to count them. And let's see if you can count all of the passes that only the white team is gonna make. And uh, uh, like I said, if, you have, if you've seen it before, don't give it away. And, and watch this video and see if you are aware today. Count how many passes the white team only is gonna make with a ball. Take a look. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Go! All right, how many passes did they make? How many? Oh, I hear 13. Anybody have a different number than 13? 12, somebody got 12, somebody get a different number besides 12? All right, 12 and 13, we're, the correct answer is 13. Before you give yourselves too big of a hand, because some of y'all are like, man, I am so aware. I was able to count all 13 passes. I got it. But I, can I ask you, did you see the moonwalking bear? What? Moonwalking bear. In other words, while you are counting the passes, there was a man dressed up in a bear suit that moonwalked across the middle of the screen. And how many of you saw it? Yes, that's what I thought. Only people that have seen this before. So Jordan got it. None of you else saw it. I didn't see it the first time I watched it. Uh, but, but I want to show you how unaware sometimes that you can be when you're focused so hard on one thing. So it's easy to miss it. Check out the rest of this video. She's rewinding it right now. Go!
How many saw it the second time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm telling you, I didn't doctor the video. It's not like the first one didn't have it and the second one did. It is the same video, and I'm going to tell you, it's crazy because when I first saw it, I was like, what? Because I never saw it because my eyes were so focused on that basketball trying to watch and count how many because they're moving around. And you see that sometimes we're not as aware as we think we are. And the first step in learning how to experience God's freedom is awareness. And it might be probably maybe even the most difficult step that we'll take in receiving the freedom God has for us. It's self-awareness. Some of us are walking through life and we don't even realize that there's a bear moonwalking through our lives, right? We don't see it. Uh, studies say that, that, uh, that human beings have at least five blind spots in their lives. Some of you are thinking, I wish so-and-so was here because they need to hear this today, right? Uh, they need to really hear that. I'm, I'm sharing this message with them this week, right? You're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this and 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 just like shoot them an email with a link. They gotta see this. Uh, but can I tell you, I'm not talking to them today. I'm talking to you. Every one of us, including me, has blind spots. We have spiritual blind spots. My son just got his driver's license last week. Come on, y'all. He did it. We were nervous, but he, he, he did it. I was proud of him. He went straight for it. He, he skipped having, he, he's 19, he skipped having a, a, a permit and all. He just went straight for it, like go for the gusto. I'm getting the whole thing. And he got it, and he's been driving. He's been doing great, y'all. And uh, but, but we're teaching and learning about blind spots. We were at Publix this week, and he was driving, and we are about to pull out. And um, from my seat, I could see, probably wouldn't have been a problem for him to just pull on out, but I could see behind us down the way, like one, uh, one more uh, uh, car uh, space down, there was somebody going to start to back up. They had their backup lights. I could see it, but I said, hey, do you see the car coming out? He's like, I know, I can't see it. And he turned around this way, and he didn't see it, and he turned around. Obviously, this way, he wasn't going to see it. And I'm like, just hang on just a second. It's in a blind spot for you. You know, as hard as you turn your head, there's like still part of the car sometimes that blocks you. And so we all have blind spots when we're driving, but we have blind spots when we're living our lives. We have spiritual blind spots, things we don't see in our relationship with God. We have emotional blind spots, ways that we react when we feel hurt or upset. We have uh, relational blind spots. <clears throat> where we, we kind of sabotage trust in relationships or maybe we have some financial blind spots and we overspend on Amazon or something like that and then we're like, whoa, I didn't mean to do that. I, don't, I only have this much left in my account this week. No way, you know, or, or maybe there's some parenting blind spots and maybe we overschedule or overcommit our kids because we want them to be involved in everything and we don't have enough boundaries set in our lives and it just runs us down. We've got these blind spots and, and they're areas of our life and my life that sometimes we just can't see what's going on. We miss the moonwalking bear. <laughs> Maybe some of us, it, it, it's that we, you know, we dominate our conversations that we have and we don't even realize that we're doing it. Other people maybe talk about it behind our backs, but we're not aware of it. Uh, maybe for other of us, we have some kind of irritating mannerisms that maybe we don't know about, but people around us, it drives them crazy, right? And, and maybe, have you ever been around somebody that's like a name dropper? Like all the time, they're like talking about all the people they know or they've been around or, you know, and you're like, Ugh, they're always telling you that same stuff. And, and why do they do that, you know? They don't see it. They don't even realize they're doing it. And the truth about you and me is that we don't know the full truth about ourselves all the time. And what's worse is we don't know the full truth about God. But Jesus says this to us in this, in John 8, 32, I read it last week for you. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you mad, right? <laughs> yeah. 
That's what my friend Mark always says, uh, was sharing here a few weeks ago. He's like, you'll know the truth, and the truth's going to make you mad. But, but the scripture says the truth will set you free. And when you find someone who's living in freedom, people that have made radical changes in their hearts and their lives, and, and they become free from their past, they learn how to live lighter, they learn how to let go of the baggage, and, and God's helping them deal with the pressures of life in and, and, and the present, and he's walking with them into the future. They can point to a moment in life where they vividly can recall where they came to their senses. They came aware, they had this aha moment where they saw the truth of who they really are or who they really were. And they recognized that, 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 that what they were doing wasn't working anymore. Typically have a specific memory where there was a, a pain or a frustration or a fear that was in their life, a grief or a loss that drove them to a defining moment where they started reflecting on their life in a new way. They became aware. And with self-awareness, you can make some good decisions. I don't want to keep living like this. That's what the prodigal son decided. I don't want to stay here in this pig pen. I don't want to stay here where I don't even have no business being. I want to go where there's a chance, where there's an opportunity for me to come home and, 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 and I can have something to eat. I don't want my future to be like my past. And we come to our senses and in that moment, we meet God at a heart level. Think about it. When did the prodigal son come to his senses? It was when he was... Not when he was partying, right? Not when he was on his spending sprees or while he was living life in the fast lane. It's actually when he slowed down and he's in the pig pen. And all of a sudden, God begins to speak to him and he becomes aware. Awareness is step one to freedom in Christ. And I want to share with you real quickly just a few ideas about awareness today. And the first one is this, the speed of life often keeps us from hearing the voice of God. Speed of life can all uh, uh, sometimes keep us from hearing the voice of God. There's something we love about speed, right? Take your kids to the playground, put them on one of those little merry-go-rounds that go, and what do they say? Faster, Daddy. Faster. I want to go faster, right? And then they get to the age like my son and they get their driver's license and before long they want to try a different kind of faster. Y'all remember that classic movie, right? Top Gun. Goose says to Maverick, I feel the need, the need for. That's right. That's how most of us live our lives. We're peeling out of the neighborhood for work because we waited to the last moment actually five minutes past when we should have left and we're leaving and the ladies y'all are putting your makeup on while you're driving and doing all the stuff and we're eating our egg mcmuffin we're taking phone calls we're guzzling down our starbucks and and and, and nobody calls this crazy right what do we call it multitasking right the truth is a busy life does not always make a better life man so many people it's like how you doing i'm busy i'm busy we're busy we're doing stuff we got to go here we got to go there seasons of our life that are sometimes really busy you get kids especially kids they get in sports. They got stuff at school. They're involved in different activities. You got your stuff. You got your work stuff. You got your family stuff. They got their stuff that they're doing. And all of a sudden, man, life is just busy. You got to have a spreadsheet that's color-coded to know who's dropping off who and who's picking up who and when you're doing it so that nobody misses your kids sitting out on the side of the soccer field without anybody to take them home, right? Right? Because you're busy. 
Now, sometimes faster is better. But can I ask you what enduring moment has ever occurred in your life when you were in a hurry? My wife's like, preach it because she knows I'm always in a hurry. I'm always like, let's go. Come on, it's time. We should have left here five minutes ago. You know, we had a moment this week. They were like, what time do we got to leave? I said, we got to leave at uh, 3.45. And they're like, 3.45? I'm like, well, if I say 4 o'clock, it'll be 10 after. And we need to leave by 4. So I just said 3.45 so we could leave by 4 o'clock. Then they got upset with me, so I can't be that quite honest with them anymore. No, I'm just joking. But, that, you know, we, 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 we speed around. We get in a hurry, and, and, and no enduring moment has ever happened in a moment of hurry. In our culture, you know what the greatest enemy to self-awareness is? I'd say it's hurry. In his book, The, the Life You've Always Wanted, uh, John Ortberger, uh, Ortberg writes this. He says, the truth is, as much as we complain about it, we are drawn to hurry. It makes us feel important. It makes us, uh, it keeps the adrenaline pumping. It, it means we don't have to look too closely at the heart or life. It keeps us from feeling our loneliness. We're busy, we're in a hurry. And if you're a follower of Jesus, if you want to grow uh, in your life, in your spiritual life, uh, if you want to live a spirit-led, uh, spirit-filled life, you realize that you're going to have to experience the deep and convicting work of God's Holy Spirit, and it usually doesn't happen in a hurry. Self-awareness is crucial to our spiritual journey. But you won't even think about this if you don't slow down. Psalm 46, verse 10, it's a great scripture. It's a good one you can memorize if you haven't already. It says this, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I love that. According to God, we come to a knowledge of him not when we're in a hurry, but when we are still. So how are you doing spiritually? That really matters to God. The state, the state of your soul matters to him. He wants you to slow down so you can begin to develop things like the character of Christ in your life. So that we can allow things like the, the fruit of the spirit to begin to grow inside of us. But sometimes the, the speed of life prevents us from hearing the voice of God. Here's the second kind of idea about awareness, and that's this. God gave the Sabbath as a gift to restore your soul. The Bible teaches that we are made in the image of God. And in the very beginning, God established a rhythm for life. I've always been kind of musical. I always loved music growing up. I learned how to play instruments. I had piano lessons in my whole life. I can't play, y'all. Terrible. I have more lessons on that than any other instrument I play. But I loved music, and, and there's something about music that you have to learn rhythm. When you're first learning how to play music, I mean, they teach you to pat your foot. I was playing trumpet in school and they teach you to pat your foot to the beat of the rhythm. You gotta stay in sync with the rhythm. We play up here, you see all of us, we have headphones in, right? There's a click inside that headphone. Click, click. some of y'all, Dominic says my mind's too loud and if I get close to my microphone, all y'all can hear my click because I play it so loud because I'm half deaf, right? And so it's like, he, you hear that though. And so that we all stay together. We're all on that click. We're all hearing that click for that rhythm. It's rhythm. There's a rhythm for our life. We engage in work. We retreat from work. We put forth effort. We ease up. This is rhythm of effort and ease. Effort and ease. 
God built it, this rhythm into our lives. Actually, he lists it in the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20. Let me take you there, verse 8 to 11. It says this, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it uh, you shall not do any work. Neither you, nor your sons or daughters, nor your male or female servants, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. From the foundation of creation in Genesis, our Father has set up a, a rhythm for our life, a, a rhythm for our work. He created six days for work and one day for rest. Six days that we leave it on the field and work hard and, and push and, and, and hurry. Uh, but the seventh, we're not supposed to do anything but rest. <clears throat> God wants us to take a day of rest. I know you're like, Pastor, some of us work different schedules now. We don't work six and one day off always. Sometimes you work 10 days and so many days off. Or I work four days, three days. Or The point is, is not six and seven. The point is that we take time to work, that we take time to rest and, and whatever that is, but take time that we crawl up in the lap of our savior jesus we we crawl up in the lap of god and and, and we allow him to work on our lives there's some stuff in our hearts that gets stretched and torn and, and 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 messed up during the week that we just need some moments alone with god to help refresh us right you work hard you rest god says i want to you to take time to replenish and revitalize your soul because y'all realize we leak right <laughs> we leak out until sometimes we're leaked out and we're, we got nothing left we become fragile and, and, and we need his healing touch in our lives every seventh day is what the scripture says some of y'all are like i need that every seven hours <laughs> Or some of y'all got like little, little, little kids. You're like, I need it every seven minutes, right? But that's God's rhythm. That's how he's, we, we're, we're designed to live this engagement and retreat. We put forth effort, then we ease up. And it's a beautiful dance that God invites us to live in. To be honest, though, some of us, we don't always dance in God's rhythm. I'm telling you, I'm, that's one I'm, I'm struggling with. I I'm like, I like to work. I like to do stuff. I like to keep going. I'm learning as I get older the value of rest and the value of living life in a rhythm. Sometimes we just want to work, 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 work. You may ask, why is this so serious and why is this so important to God? Because the truth is, when your life is out of balance, people in your life look worse, right? Right? Problems look impossible to overcome. Uh, when you're tired, families are harder to love and get along with, uh, and you get exhausted, and, and, and all of a sudden, escaping uh, into to, to secret sin just uh, looks more inviting and more appealing because you've been going, going, going. And when you're living outside of uh, God's designed rhythm, you don't have time for God. And in a hurried world, you don't slow down and reflect and you become self-aware. So God says, I'm going to mandate in your life. I'm going to ask everyone, every follower of me to take a day and rest and reflect. I'm going to give it as a, a gift to help restore your soul, to reveal the things about you that you'll never see if you're constantly in a hurry. Let me just say, there's a distinction between busy and hurry. I got a few things to put on the screen real quick. Here's the difference between busy and hurry. It's a full schedule. 
uh, a lot of stuff to do or it's uh, hurried is being preoccupied where we just think about all the stuff that we got to do. We're not necessarily doing a bunch of, we're thinking about it all the time. Busy is we got a lot of activities. Uh, hurry is I'm unable to be fully present uh, where I'm at. Busy is like, hey, I focus on the outward conditions and, and hurried is an inner condition of the soul where we, we don't even have room for God. A busy is like physically demanding, hurried is spiritually draining. Busy is I, I, I realize I need God, hurried is I'm unavailable even to God because I'm hurried. Understand there's a big difference between busy and being hurried in life. Listen, Jesus was busy doing the Father's work. He was the Son of God with the weight of the world on his shoulders, and he was busy. But I challenge you to find one place in the gospel where Jesus was hurried. He was present. He was available. He was surrounded by need. Someone needed healing. Someone needed to be loved. Someone needed to be prayed for. But Jesus was never preoccupied. He's always calm, always fully present. And the reason is because Jesus had a practice of regularly withdrawing for times alone with his Father, even in the middle of his busyness of, of, of ministry. Luke chapter 5, verse 16 says, But Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed no matter what was happening jesus made time for his soul mark 1 35 says very early in the morning uh, while it was still dark jesus got up he left the house and he went out to a solitary place where he prayed continuing on verse 36 and 37 simon and his companions went to look for him and when they found him they exclaimed Everyone is looking for you. Can I tell you, Jesus loved everyone. But even he said no sometimes. He, he said no to nonstop accessibility. Because he understood that hurry is the enemy of the Father's deeper work in our souls. Understand that hurry decreases uh, uh, your awareness in your life. You'll never find freedom in your life until you slow down and ask God to make you more self-aware. Let me finish with this third point. Freedom starts when you stop saying, I'm busy, and begin saying, I'm ready. What am I ready for? I'm ready to look at my life for who I really am. I'm, I'm ready to stop the smoke and mirror game. I'm going to really dig in to see who I really am. Sometimes you, we like glance in the mirror and then like, okay, I'm ready. Yeah, I'll move on. But it's another thing to like stop and really look. Oh, look at that. My hair is really, I don't need just to brush it. I need to cut it, you know. Uh, I, I need to fix this blemish or, boy, I didn't realize I needed to shave right there. I thought I was getting it. But no, I need to trim this or I need to do that. We, we become more aware when we really take time to look in a deeper way. I'm ready. I'm ready, God, for you to reveal to me the blind spots. God, I'm ready to see from myself who I'm really becoming. Can I ask a dangerous question? Do we like who we're becoming? This week, you may need to press in and find a moment to pray a prayer of awareness. There's one in Psalm 139 I'd point you to. It's verse 23. David, the king, says this, Search me, God. Know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Is there any area of your life where you need inspection? God, search me, test me, know me. God, may me speaking to you in this moment in your head and in your heart and you're starting to become aware of what it is he's trying to say. And I just want to challenge you this week to pray a prayer like this. God, search my heart. God, know who I am. Help me to know who I am. 
Test me in these things so I can realize what's going on, where my shortcomings, where my faults and failures are. Help me to identify them. You know me, God. You know my anxious thoughts. Maybe this is the moment where God makes you aware that you're sacrificing your marriage on the, uh, on the altar of, of your career. Maybe this is the moment that God makes you aware that you're, maybe you're, you're, you're yelling and you're screaming is destroying your kids. Maybe this is the moment that God makes you aware when you take that moment, search me, test me, know me, God, that, 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 that you realize maybe it really isn't my spouse's fault, but it's actually my own arrogance and pride that I need to deal with. I know this is hard. And you may feel an urge to like, I'm just going to blow past this one, Pastor. Because you don't want to feel the pain and you don't want to see the truth. King David says, pray that prayer of awareness with me. Search me, God. Know me, God. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. And this is how he finishes in verse 24. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. There's a way of slavery and bondage and there's a way of freedom that we can live. The on-ramp to God's free way begins when you stop saying to God, I'm busy, and you start saying, God, I'm ready. I'm ready. Do a work in me. I'm ready for what you want to say to me. I'm ready to, for you to reveal the blind spots to me. Let me see myself the way you see me. God, do whatever it takes to, uh, on the inside of me to make me the godly man or woman that you want me to be and that you've created to me, me to be. Remember that freedom starts when you stop saying I'm busy and you begin to say I'm ready. Listen, as we take this journey this journey of freedom, things may get a little more chaotic before you experience the peace and the freedom that God has for you. That's the road that we're on. Who you were yesterday doesn't determine who you can be tomorrow. I need you to hear that today. Father created you in his image. Jesus loves you and he gave his life for you. And the Holy Spirit can change you into who God has called you to be and who he's calling you to be. So I want to close by praying for you this morning. Will you just bow your heads right now? Father, I'm coming to you. We invite you, Holy Spirit, now to come in this place. You're here already, Holy Spirit. Just come to this moment and meet us right where we're at today. Confirm the truth that you've been whispering to each and every one of us. May the words that have been spoken that come from you, Lord, let them glow and burn in our hearts. Let us not look away, but help us to see them. Any words that are not from you, I pray that they would fall away to the ground and not be, not be remembered, Lord. We want to focus on you. We want to hear your voice. We want to answer your call. Your head still bowed. Jesus has said to us, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Maybe today you're here and you feel weary, you feel burdened, you feel weighed down, you feel worn out. Today you need God to just restore your soul. That's you this morning. I want to pray for you right where you're at. I believe God is right here ready to meet you right where you're at today. Restore your soul. Would you just pray with me? Jesus, thank you for this invitation to come to you now in the middle of our weariness in the middle of our burdens that we carry we ask today for your rest we need rest for our souls rest that can't come from a two-hour nap or a two-week vacation Lord. 
rest that can only come as you allow us to climb up in your lap and you begin to do a work in our hearts and our minds and begin to reveal things to us, help us to be aware and you begin to restore and heal and replenish us. So come now, Father, in this moment. Pray that during this week we slow down enough to hear your voice. That you would step in, Jesus, and that you would carry our burdens and reveal the blind spots to us. Help us to become more aware. God, shine your light of truth in the dark spots of our lives. Give us the courage to slow down a little bit and to become aware of what you are speaking and wanting to do in our hearts and lives today. Jesus, we love you. We love you and we can't wait to see what you're going to do in our lives as we journey towards freedom pray all this in your name, Lord. Amen.